Welcome to Peak Vision today. I know we're not live, but if you're watching this, we're so glad that you took the time to tune in. Uh, everyone had a good holiday? Yeah. Everyone ready for 2023? I'm super excited about this year. I love the word believe. Anybody else? Believe. Who's believing for something this year? Who is too afraid to believe? Oh, everybody's, nobody's afraid to believe? So, no, yeah, so nobody's been so hurt that they're afraid to be let down, so they just don't believe to keep safe. Cool. Yeah. It's a real thing. Yeah. It's, it's a real thing. I just want to validate you this morning. Say that God's got this. Amen. Yeah. So, who was here on the first Sunday back? Who was challenged? Yes. Who's, who's dealt with some things? So if you, were, if you were missing in the house, Sarah ministered to us about forgiveness. That F word that we love in the house of God. She helped us to recognize symptoms of when we have unforgiveness in our heart. Who thought they were all good and then realized, oh, that's me. Hiding from the person in the supermarket. <laughs> Running around the aisle. <laughs> No, that's nobody here. We all deal with that. That was awesome. And of course, who preached last week about how can we believe for anything if we cannot believe that one, we have a creator who created us. He is God, supreme, superior, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. Oh, those are good words, eh? It's not even in my notes. Poof. But Jesus is so good. So... We are going to stand again. If you've got your Bibles, as you're standing, open up your app, open up your paper word. Turn with me to the book of Romans. We're going to go chapter 10, starting in verse 8. Are you ready? Are you with me? If you're one of those people who haven't got either of those, you can follow along with me behind. All right. Oh, 10 verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, I just want to say with your mouth, like the, with your mouth, like the Americans would say, and in your heart, that is if you confess, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Full stop. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between a Jew, Gentile, black, white, fat, skinny, whatever, man, woman. For the same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses some. All. All. Who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Tell your neighbor the great news as you sit down. That is good news. I was saying, um, sharing that with Kent, I was like, that's all we need. It's done. Now I can hear some of you oldies going, mm, is it really that simple, Pania? Is it? Isn't it? The Bible was very clear. There was no black, there was no gray area, colored sections, black and white. All who call on the name of the Lord shall be? All? all. Some. All. What if? All. All will be saved. That's it. It's not what we do. It's not who we hang out with. It's not even what church you go to or don't go to if you don't attend church. It's not who your parents are. It's not who your family is. It is just who Jesus is and what is he has done. <sighs> Does it just not take some pressure off? It's good. Ed Cole says... Maturity begins with the acceptance of responsibility. 
but it's got some pretty little pictures that I'm just going to get Marty to put up for us. Oh, I know, isn't this cute? So some of us have well left the stage celebrating our grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Some of us are right in the middle of that. Some of us are holding on to a promise of that. But look at them. Then they grow. They get all cute. <laughs> Dribbly little mouths. They're, oh, hello. So these last few photos are obviously of my family. And I think about how cute they were. <laughs> Aunt Baby's cute. That's so cute. But as humans, our bodies grow. They develop without any help, anything of our part, what we do, what we don't do. They kind of just grow up. You can be a 16-year-old and be the most mature person around, yet you can be 60 years old and remain the most immature person around. It's all a matter of our growth and development. I was talking to... So my daughter, if you didn't know... We are going to be grandparents. Woohoo! So, I'm sorry, darling, if you didn't want me to announce that, but this isn't live, so we'll sort that. So, we are super excited. 5th of August is the D Day. We know that. Did you know 2% of babies will actually come on their due date? 2%. So, we're 98%, probably not going to have the baby on that day. However, However, so I'm super excited about it, and I remember a number of years ago, I was speaking on the phone with Donna Funk. So do you guys remember Todd and Donna Funk? They've come and ministered here. They're coming on Art Deco weekend, so make sure you set something aside and plan that. We also will be having a dress-up Art Deco Sunday, so bring your gears for that. But anyway, she was talking about how... She goes, Pani, have you ever thought about when you have grandbabies what they're going to call you? And I just was like, I know I don't want to be called Grandma. Because for some reason that just feels old, like I have to be an old person, and even though I am older, I don't want to identify as old. <laughs> Apparently we can do that, just identify how we want. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, so, I, so she said, hey, I've got a name. She said, I, I just was thinking about you, and I think that your grandbabies should call you, lean a little closer, come on, <laughs> Honey Mama. Honey Mama, and I was like, ah, I love it. And so I'm just going around like, Honey Mama, Honey Mama. So we're at the dinner table the other night, and because now it's a reality, I'm going to have a grandchild who's going to call me Honey Mama. So my other, kid, <laughs> other kids are at the table, we're having dinner or something, I don't know. And we're talking about this, and the kids are like, There is no way our children are calling you Honey Mama. And I was like, Watch me, watch me. And then I was talking with Ariana, who's having the baby, and we're talking about that laughing. She goes, Mum, the baby's not going to be able to say that name. And I said, darling, the baby's not going to be able to say any name. But it's going to be in direct contention with your name. Hi, <laughs> mama, mama, mama. That's probably what my name will sound like. Hi, mama, mama, mama. I mean, how adorable was that? <laughs> ah, I'm just I'm salivating thinking about how delicious that is. <laughs> Honey mama. So because she can't, this baby can't pronounce that name, do I change it for them? Do I move that marker? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> my son. Oh, my son. We can talk about you. <laughs> but no, you keep it the same and you teach that baby and when they're talking in gibberish to you splitting out their mouth with their big eyes and dirty sticky stuff everywhere and snot hanging out and they're like blah, 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 and you're like, yes, that's right you're so beautiful <laughs> don't deny it, that's what we all do yeah. is that right you know, we come down to their level we communicate with them I'm not expecting them to blast out with the Ten Commandments or Jesus is the Lord or Hallelujah. I'm expecting blah, 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 blah. Yeah. 
of course I don't talk to everybody like that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you see what I'm saying? Babies are babies. We talk to them, we communicate them, we teach them how to learn, to converse, to have a language, to communicate. We encourage it. I have no idea what you're saying, but just keep spitting stuff out your mouth. Our spiritual life, while similar, doesn't work. It works exactly like that. Exactly like that. There's a period of time when we have an encounter with God. Close your eyes and think about that first encounter you had with God. And you just thought, man, he came and did something inside your heart. I don't know if he broke something, set something free, released joy, pulled you out of darkness. Maybe it wasn't anything as great as that, but you just knew that you needed to know God. We were just like that small baby. That's what we're like in our Christian walk. But a newborn with nappies, unable to communicate because we don't know the language. And just like a newborn baby, we need to surround our people, ourselves with people, a tribe, who have the language, who can help us, who can grow us who aren't going to be expecting us to dictate something out of Revelations when I can't even get one word out. Babies devour whatever is given to them. If they can get something in their hand, it's in their mouth straight away. Good, bad, ugly, smelly, clean, whatever, it's in their mouth. The Atalia was a very slow walker. It was not in any hurry... What so Hannah was walking nine months, conversating with you, full sentences. Atalia, 13 months, I don't even think you were still walking. But she would sit on the floor with a deliciously chubby self, and she would just concentrate on her pinch of fingers. She would pick every single thing up off the floor. Oh, it was irritating. The t- but the things you couldn't even see, you'd vacuum, and she'd still find something. But that's what babies do. Because they're inquisitive, they're hungry to learn, they want to know, oh, what does that food taste like? When you watch kids eat bananas or lemons, (laughs) their face is like... (laughs) (laughs) It is crucial time, and we need to surround ourselves with good people. And oftentimes, who we surround ourselves with and what they say can help become the cornerstone or the foundation of our walk with the Lord. And this is great if it's good. Not so great if it's not. But whatever we build on top of those foundations that were laid will either be good or not good. So we need to remember that it is not by my works, not by what I do, that I'm saved, but through who? Jesus. It's done. Simple. That's my foundation. That is the cornerstone of my faith. In Isaiah 28, verse 16, the word of the Lord says, So this is what the sovereign Lord says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. See, look, watch, behold, I've laid a stone down, but it says this, that it's been tested, it's proven, it is good. I was thinking about, when I thought about that, it reminded me of that movie uh, with Heath Ledger, A Knight's Tale, anyone seen that? So good. His intro person. Anyway, but they say this line. You have been weighed, you have been measured, and you have been found wanting. And then it says, come back when you are worthy. Now I think about if we were weighed and measured, and someone said to us, you're not good enough, you need to come back later. It's kind of a shame. But when Jesus was weighed and he was measured, he was measured He was declared holy, worthy of that foundation. Church, you have been weighed, you have been measured, 
that you are worthy. You are worthy. According to various dictionary meanings for cornerstone, it means this. A stone that forms the base of a corner of a building joining two walls. A nominal starting place. Basic part that everything depends on. See how important this is? Often gives information about that particular building, who it was, who designed it, who it was uh, built in memorial of, or a year, something significant is often written on that piece. But when we have this, we have the strongest foundation that we can build on. And I think about no matter what we build on top of that foundation, it will be solid, it'll be firm, it'll be unshakable. But if we don't get our foundation right, it won't. And I think about, you know, Auckland, um, it's covered in rain at the moment, but the Sky Tower, it's completely erect, straight, up in the sky. There's no wavering, it doesn't move. It's got a strong foundation. In fact, I think it's, is it deeper down than what it is up? I can't remember. But the foundation in that building is strong. And yet if we don't sort it out, our building could look more like the leaning tower of Pisa. What are we building? When we get this right, it becomes the strongest foundation. We can begin to trust him, because this is key. We need to trust him and all his words and his promises, because he has already been tested and proven. Now, same for our physical bodies. They don't just remain in a static, specific development stage. It happens. You change, you grow. Your body changes. Initially, in our toddler, newborn and toddler um, years, as a midwife, I used to joke with all the mums, saying that this, the whole aim of a baby is to get to morbidly obese as quickly as they can. That's really what we th- how I think about babies. They cannot ever be really too big. So that's their whole goal in life, to sit, eat, poo, sleep. On repeat, on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. That's their whole job. And then as they start to crawl around, run around, their bodies grow, you notice they start to thin out, and then, you know, everything's off. Then hormones get involved, you know, all the fun stuff. But they develop from babies into adults, yeah? Yeah? There is continual evidence externally of their growth. And just the same, there should be an external evidence of our growth with God that's happening on the inside of us. And can I even go to point out that if there's no external evidence or change, then maybe that's a reflection of something that's happening inside you, inside me. I remember there was this, uh, you know when you know, so then, you know, butting in down the front here, (laughs) uh, you know when you come to the Lord and everybody's really quick to tell you what the sin in your life is? And maybe even sometimes when you've been in the Lord a little while and you should have dealt with something, there's already some helpful person who's going to point that out to you. Hey, you shouldn't be doing that. And you know that's not actually our job. (laughs) That Sam was just telling somebody then. Our job is to come alongside people, to love people, to offer advice, to offer scriptural reference. So I remember I came back to the Lord, I was uh, about 18, 17, 18, no I was 18, I'd had a baby, had some fun on the way, had to face the consequences which wasn't so fun. Anyway, I've got this beautiful daughter now who's delicious, who's given me a grandbaby, so see God works it all out. But I remember coming back to the Lord. So, I was in love with Jesus. Like, adore him. I'm smoking. 
I'm still in a relationship with my boyfriend, who I'm still having sex with. I, I don't know if I was drinking. Obviously, that wasn't Kent. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, maybe that's not obvious. Anyway, it wasn't Kent. But, uh, but you know, and I, I remember I was on the worship team. I was just loving the Lord. And I was outside the front of the church. Hey, welcome to church. <laughs> so glad you could come today. <laughs> I think about it now. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is terrible. Anyway, I'll just let, let them sort that out. Hello. Yeah. Obviously, that was just me. Nobody else did that. But nobody had to tell me what I needed to clean up. In fact, it might have been that very week later, Holy Spirit just said, Pania, you don't need to smoke anymore. I was like, oh, don't I? Okay. Stop smoking. Just done. And then... God said to me, Pania, that's not your husband. I was like, had a fight about that. <laughs> you get to pick everything in my life. Why can't I pick this one thing? Thinking that I know more than what God knows about my whole life and who I should be with. Anyway, so I was like, okay. God had to sort me out, get ready for Kent. But anyway, so I was like, okay, he's not my husband. What am I doing? I need out of this relationship. Boom, Done. Nobody had to come alongside me, tell me I was sinning, you're a filthy sinner, God can't use you, you're going to be da 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 And it was done. When Jesus does the work, it is done. Let Jesus do the work in other people's lives. So apart from, so, you know, I dealt with all that stuff. And apart from having a consistent word life, so a regular life, well, we are reading this word. How can we talk the language? How can we know the skills? How can we know the plans and the purposes? If we don't read the word, you've got to read the word. You've got to pray. MC Hammer, we've got to pray just to make it today. Pray. The big poo pants. Okay, we're going over the head, top of some... But you know, but so we need, a re- we need to regularly read our word. We need to be regularly praying and believing God and trusting in Him. The other thing we need to do is we need to have a consistent worship, a lifestyle of worship. And yes, on a Sunday, worship looks like singing, but that's not what worship is. Worship is here. Worship is going to your job and being honorable and being good and not good as in a good person, but being good at what you do. Like, don't shy away from who you are. Like, I watch our worship team, and I love watching them excel in their gifts and not shy away because they think they're too good. Like, I want them to be the best at what they are. I want all the leaders to be the very best at what they are and who they are. I don't want people to back down and have to apologize. I'm so sorry that I'm so awesome. (laughs) I want us to be proud. I'm not awesome at everything, but that, I'm the man. And it's okay. Like, it's good. Why would you want me to do something that I suck at? I'm not into developing all the areas that I really suck at. I want to develop the stuff that I'm really good at. Do you know why? Because there's somebody else sitting in a chair right maybe where you are that excels at the very thing that I'm terrible at. Isn't that makes what makes the body work? Do you know, side note, I was listening to the final podcast of the year and we had the Honourable Chester came onto the AO podcast. 70 trillion cells are in your body. You like that? 70 trillion? And they all work in unity to do what the body does. We have approximately 280 people sitting in here. Do you think we can all get together and work in unity to do what the body does? Yes, we can. But do we? 280? 70 trillion! Just was like, it's a good podcast, you should have a listen. It makes you really appreciate 
the creative God and the, actually what it takes for us to be human. Like, we didn't just like, oh, here we are. This is probably one of the most important, not the most, but one of, become a committed member to your house, to your church. And if it's not here, then my prayer for you is that it is somewhere that you can commit, get really wedged in, like force yourself in. Here I am. This is my tribe. This is my people. I'm going where they're going. What can I do? If you're an active member and you participate and you're passionate about where you're serving and you're passionate about God and something, whatever he's done inside you and you want, man, I want this family to grow. I want to see these kids grow up in the things of God. Man, maybe kids is the place for you. Man, I just love to bake. I love to bless people with my cooking. Maybe that's the place for you to serve. Maybe you like to come alongside people and just de- develop them and disciple them for a short length of time. Grow them how to read the Bible, how to pray in tongues, how to pray for people. Oh, maybe there's something you could do with that. But I don't want you to just come and tick a box like, yep, serve today. I want you to be passionate about it. I want you to be like, I can't not do this. It is what gets me up, it keeps me awake. I'm thinking about how I can do, how can I do this better? How can I do Sometimes as a parent, you're not necessarily passionate about what you're doing every day, but you definitely lie in bed at night going, how can I do tomorrow better? <laughs> or nailed it today. You know, but what are you passionate about? Get involved in the house. That's exciting. That's an exciting part. Honestly, it is the best thing ever. Remember what Ed Cole says? Maturity begins with the acceptance of responsibility. There's some of these things that I'm responsible for. Let's turn to 1 Peter 2. I'm just going to read from the NKJ. It says this in verse 4. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God, precious. You also, you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, we've already read it. I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, an elect precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. So therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed, but you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. This is who we are. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light, who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not attained mercy but now have attained mercy. Just as Jesus was a living stone, he was tried, and he was made acceptable, worthy. So we are living stones, and God is building us all together. It's kind of beautiful. Messy, but beautiful. But I love how in the the Passion Translation, it says, so keep coming to him. Keep coming to him. My uncle, uh, Noel, he lives in Australia, and he shared this message with our life group at, at this stage, and he just talked about how, and I may have shared it, he talks about how our internal walk with the Lord, there should be a well-worn path, a well-worn track to him, a path that we travel regularly 
so that if anyone saw it, they would know, hmm, something's down here because someone goes here all the time. A well-worn track. Church, do you have a well-worn track? To hear the voice of the Lord for yourself? To dig the treasures of the word for yourself? Maturity begins with acceptance of responsibility. That's my job. It's not Kent's job. It's not even Jack and Sari's job. It's not your connect group leader's job. It's your job. You are responsible for your internal working of what the Lord is doing. That's exciting. But that's also scary. Because that means if someone I maybe am around all the time and they're unsure of things, they come to me for some guidance and you're like, mate, oh my gosh, there's a stone here that I keep standing on. And they're like, you need to take the stone out the way, guys. (laughs) Yeah, it's like the pebble in my shoe. Thanks, Mr. Funk, for that. Anyway. I'm trying to remember where I was. Uh, Sometimes we have friends around us and they want to lead us. Well, they want to ask you a question. Oh, this is happening. I'm not really happy with how this is going. So, we feel... This is, these are magic words. We feel. As soon as someone says that to you, you just need to turn off and go, well, mate, God's actually not much about feelings. He's much about doings. <laughs> and it's not somebody else's job to tell you where you should be doing, what you should be doing. Outside of leadership, people who journey with you, People who know the cost of your journey and the cost of what it would be for you and your family. Because you know what? Anyone can offer you advice. It doesn't cost them anything. They're not going to feel the heartache. They're not going to feel the pain. They're not doing any of the hard work. Who looks out for your soul? We're nearly done. 1 Corinthians 3. This is a bit of... We've got a, oh, hello. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. Three verse one. When I was with you, I found it impossible to speak to you as those who are spiritually mature people, for you are still dominated by the mindset of the flesh. And because you are immature infants in Christ, I had to nurse you and feed you with milk, not with the solid food of more advanced teachings, because you weren't ready for it. In fact... You are still not ready for it. (laughs) You are still not ready to be fed solid food, for you are living your lives dominated by the mindset of the flesh. Ask yourselves, is there jealousy among you? Do you compare yourselves with others? Do you quarrel like children and end up taking sides? If so, this proves that you are living your lives centered on yourselves dominated by the mindset of the flesh and behaving like who? Unbelievers. For when you divide yourselves up in groups, a Paul group, remember some say Paul, an Apollos group, you are acting like people without the Spirit's influence. This is challenging. This is... Who is Apollos really? Or who is Paul? Aren't we both just servants through whom you believed our message? Aren't each of us doing the ministry the Lord has assigned to us? I planted the church, and Apollos came and cared for it. But it was God who caused it to grow. This means the one who plants is not anybody special, nor the one who waters. For God is the one who brings the supernatural growth. It's God. Now... The one who plants and the one who waters are equally important and on the same team. 
just in case there was any confusion, same team. But each will be rewarded for his own work. For we are co-workers with God, and you are God's cultivated garden, the house he is building. God has given me unique gifts as a skilled master builder who lays a good foundation. Afterward, another craftsman comes and builds on it. So builders beware, let every builder do his work carefully according to God's standards. For no one is empowered to lay an alternative foundation other than the good foundation that exists, which is who? Jesus Jesus Christ. The quality of materials used by anyone building on this foundation will soon be made apparent, whether it has been built with gold, silver, and costly stones, or wood, hay, and straw. Their work will soon become evident, for the day will make it clear. It'll be clear. It'll stick out like things on animals, for those of you who can work that out. Because it will be revealed by blazing fire, and the fire will test and prove the workmanship of each builder. If his work is consumed by the fire, he will suffer great loss, yet he himself will barely escape destruction, like one being rescued out of a burning house. Can I encourage you, maybe this is the year when people want to sit down and say things that don't edify the house of God. And I'm talking this house of God. I'm talking Peak Vision Church, Havelock North, Hawke's Bay, the anointed place to be. Where we're believing that God is going to do something supernaturally powerful and wonderful through us and in spite of us. That we will be a church that wants to be actively involved in what God is doing and not pulled along like a teenager who doesn't want to shower. Actually, that's funny because none of my teenagers have that trouble. (laughs) Doesn't want to get out of bed. There you go. This church will be known for our unashamedly, boisterously loud shouts of praise, shouts of worship, declaring that Jesus is the Lord. I'm not ashamed of it. I don't care who you are. I need a mature believer. I need maturity to be in this place. And I don't care how long you've been in the things of God, in church, sitting on a chair, serving, whatever. If you look like the world, you talk like the world, you smell like the world, then guess what? You are. But we can't change unless we can look at ourselves in the mirror and go, flip, I didn't realize how far I'd come. See, when we read, and this is our reflection, this is our reflection There should be a well-worn path in here. Well-worn. Well-worn. Should be well-worn. Because it matters to me that I do my dad proud. When he looks at me and he goes, darling, you were amazing. But how can I do that if this is blank? There's no journey in here. It's just a book that's gathering dust on the shelf. Or under a bed. Never comes out. Because we might not necessarily be doing something wrong. But sometimes we get stuck doing something that leads that way. But how do we know? And you surround yourself with people who, one, know they have a relationship with the word of God, that you know they have a relationship with the king of kings, that you know they have a worship relationship with the kingdom of heaven. They're honorable. They speak respectively to their spouses. They love their children. How? Because they're well behaved. I'm not talking all the time. Kids are kids. They're going to be naughty. But we expect that. I don't expect adults to be naughty. It's not a good look 
fact, Proverbs is full of stuff about that. But Pani, how will I know? Because they look like God. They smell like God. They bring words of life and affirmation. What they say about Peak Vision Church is wholesome. Maturity begins with the acceptance of responsibility. I can't change, I can't grow unless I admit to what I need to change and what I need to grow. And I can't do either of those things if I don't even know where I am. Who am I? Who is God? Who is he to me? It's all because of the work that Jesus has done, not mine. But I have a responsibility to develop a well-worn track in my journey with the Lord. And as we think about this today, I want you to take a moment, maybe close your eyes, and maybe we want to commit 2023 to regularly reading the Word of God. And can I challenge you to do it when it's not convenient? It's called discipline. Commit to a lifestyle of worship. We are worshippers above everything else. We are first worshippers of the King of Kings. We are created to please him. Proverbs 16, verse 6 says, You can avoid evil through surrendered worship. And the fear of God for the power of his faithful love removes sin's guilt and grip over you. If you struggle with sin or getting out of its grip, then stand and worship. Come to the front. Worship God unabandonedly, unashamedly. Become a committed member in the house of God. Psalm 92 verses 12 to 15. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted where? In the house of the Lord. Shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. To declare that the Lord is upright that he is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. We don't need box tickers at Peak Vision Church. We need people passionate about their passion, passionate about your passion and their creator. So whatever it is that you are thinking about, I know sometimes when people preach, it can be difficult if we're feeling like offended. <laughs> not like, ah, offended, if we get offended. And can I tell you that my heart is not to bring offense. My heart is to bring challenge. Because I want to see you be all that God has for you to be. Because not only will that benefit you and your household, your future, it benefits the people you hang around with which then in turn benefits the church where you hang out, where you sow, where you are planted, but it benefits your workplace. Like, we're doing the world a great job, but it's fulfilling and here for you. So we're going to stand. Maturity begins with taking responsibility. What is it that you need to take responsibility for? Are you prepared to do that? I remember a man of God stood in a room of leaders and he said, please raise your hands if you have ever been hurt by church leadership before. This is a room of leaders and pastors. Not one hand remained down. And this blessed man who had nothing to do with anything, came in front of every single person 
and on behalf of God in the church took the responsibility and the weight of the hurt it was caused. And it was one of the most freeing things that someone's ever done for me. And I think about Jesus. He saw your life before you were born. And he took the weight of everything that you have and ever will done that is wrong. And he said, honey, I've got you. I've got you. Son, I've got you. I love you so much that I'm going to take that from you and carry that for you. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for the absolutely powerful and wonderful work of the cross that is now not by what I do, but because of what you have done, that I am right with God. I thank you in this time that you are challenging us to deal with whatever it is that you are revealing to us through Holy Spirit. I thank you that your heart for us is to be fully functioning and alive to all things kingdom. We believe that you indeed are the Son of God and that you died and you rose again, that we may live free, free from any bondage, any hurt, any ache, any brokenness, any sickness. It is done through the work of the cross. And this morning... I say with my mouth. That I believe that you are Lord. Simply that I believe that you are Lord. If you want to respond to that today, one you don't know, Jesus at all. We've got a team of people who would love to stand with you to help guide you in your new journey with the Lord. And if you're someone who wants to respond to the, to the challenge of maturity and taking responsibility, then we'd also love to stand with you. Come. We'd love to pray with you. God is good. He's got good things for us. Amen. Amen. Amen.